Yep. Tired of air pumps that always never fit in your suitcase? That was my problem too until I made this cute little pump out of plumbing parts and some 3D printed ones. Gets up to 25 PSI and you can even disassemble it for easier storage and travel. What more could you ask for? Hi, my name's Chris and I just can't stop making things. Today I'm going to show you how I made a portable air pump for my inflatable surfboard so I could take it to Australia. It's made from hardware store parts and some 3D printed components. The heart and soul of the pump are two very simple 3D printed valves I designed. There's a disc that pushes out when air goes one way, but if the airflow reverses direction, the disc shuts and seals the valve. The valves are going to live in the handles of the pump, which are connected to a plunger. Plunger goes in a tube with some caps on the end, and then add a couple hose connections to the handle. And now when you lift the plunger, air is pulled through one of the valves, and when you push it down, it's pushed out the other one. All right, now we just gotta make it. I powered up Plasticity, my favorite 3D making software, did some awesome designing, and then printed out the parts using ABS filament. Here they are, excited for their new life as an air pump. I did some ninja moves with a pipe that I got from the hardware store. This is a thin-walled PVC pipe that's made for central vac systems. I figured out the perfect length to fit in my suitcase and marked it. I used the old wrap a piece of paper around a tube for a perfectly perpendicular line trick, and then cut along that perfectly perpendicular line with my jeweler's saw. Not sure why I'm using my jeweler's saw, I guess it was just what I had on hand. Little bit of sanding, temporarily pop on the end cap, Temporarily assemble the plunger and temporarily put it on a piece of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe. Slide the plunger into the main tube and then mark a good location for the T-connector of the handle. I cut it off with a tubing cutter and then cut two more pieces that are going to be the handles. Since I'm going to be sliding my valves into these handle tubes, it's incredibly important that I remove any burr left on the inside by the pipe cutter. And the outside can use a little cleanup as well. Okay, so next I sanded any surfaces on the 3D printed parts that need to be able to seal. That includes the side of the valve body that has the star-shaped pattern, one side of the thin disc, and the bottom side of the top half of the plunger. All of these should be sanded to at least 600 grit, even finer if you have it. Now you'll see when I put the top and bottom half of the plunger together, there's a little gap between the two. And that's the fault of this ring on the top. So I'm going to sand that ring down until the two halves fit together with no gap. Next I made the top end cap which needs a hole in it for the plunger pipe to go through. I started with a cheap Forstner-ish style drill bit, but it just started going way off center so I decided to try something else. I taped a pencil to a pair of dividers to make a high tech tool, drew a fancy star shape on the end of the cap, of which the center of should theoretically be the middle of the cap. Tried drilling a new pilot hole which was extremely awkward, and then worked away at it with a step drill. Checked my work with a fancy phone board pencil tool, realized I was still off center, so went to the classic knife and file system. Perfect. I put some super glue on the unsanded side of the valve disc, and from the other side pushed through a piece of 3D printing filament. I cut off some of the excess, and then using a soldering iron on low heat, melted down the rest of the post until it touched the disc. I got out a smooth silicone baking sheet and punched a small hole. The post goes through the hole, and it goes down onto a piece of wood with a hole drilled for the post. Holding the disc down tightly, I cut around as close as possible with my super sharp scalpel. I then trimmed the post to exactly 6.7 millimeters above the rubber pad. Post through the hole in the valve body, and I very carefully and shakily used my soldering iron to mushroom out the end of the post. I don't want to mushroom all the way down because I need to leave room for the valve to move back and forth. I cleaned the inside of one end of one of my PVC handles, and then applied transition cement in one end. I'm using transition cement because I'm gluing the ABS 3D printed part to a PVC tube. I also applied just a tiny little bit of cement right along the bottom edge of the valve. I then very carefully pushed the valve into the pipe, making sure none of the glue got onto the disc. I left it with the valve body sitting just a little bit above the end of the pipe. Waited for it to dry so there were no fumes left, and gave it a scientific test. Now the valve on the other handle goes in the opposite way. I didn't want to get glue on the flappy disc thing, so it's not installed yet. I applied glue only to the back end of the valve body, and pushed it in till it was flush with the end of the pipe. The main thing I'm looking for here is that there's no air leaks between the pipe and the valve. Once dry, I grabbed the disc and slid it up through the back. 
Holding it up with my little finger, I was able to mushroom the end of the rod with my shaky soldering iron. And there we go, two simple valves. I cleaned my PVC T fitting and one of the handles, and applied PVC cement on both surfaces. I'm gluing the handle where the valve is on the inside first, so I don't have to worry too much about glue getting in there and messing it up. Push the handle into the T with a slight twist and let it dry. The other handle's a little trickier because for one, I don't want it to go all the way into the T. I want to leave just a little room for the valve to move. So before gluing anything, I marked how far I wanted it to go. Then I applied glue quite sparingly on the inside of the T and a little less sparingly on the outside of the handle. Push them together till the line lines up and let it dry. Next I used ABS cement to glue the top and bottom half of the plunger together. Their brush is not exactly petite, so I used my own. I applied it around the top ring on the bottom half of the plunger, and then pushed the two parts together. To be honest, I made a bit of a mess with it with too much glue, so I tried to clean it up with a paper towel. I thought it might not seal properly because of this, but it turned out to work just fine. Once dry, I cleaned the excess glue from inside the plunger, and test fit it on the plunger pipe. Unfortunately, I could not get it off. No matter what I do, I can't get it off. So I just made it really permanent with some super glue. This was also about the time that I realized that I had done a very good job of gluing my thumb to the pipe as well. A bit of minor surgery and a little less fingerprint and I was good to go again. I glued the end cap on the main pipe, grabbed some silicone grease, greased up the groove on the plunger, and installed a rubber o-ring. A bit more grease, and a bit more grease, and it's time to try out the pump. I wasn't sure if I'd need to glue the pump handle onto the plunger pipe, but I've used the pump quite a few times now and the friction fit seems to be just fine. It also means it's easier to store and pack and if something goes wrong, I just have to fix one of the parts. Now I just needed a way to attach my hose onto the pump, so I remixed this design from JD on printables. It's important that top surface is smooth so it seals against the hose gasket, so I sanded it up real good. A bit of glue and installed into both ends of the handle. At this point, the pump is now workable, but I wanted a pressure gauge so I wouldn't explode my surfboard. I drilled a hole right through the T in the handle, used the appropriate tap to create some threads, wrapped a little Teflon tape around the threads on the gauge, and screwed it in. Now the one downside of putting the gauge here is you only see the pressure while you are actually pumping. As soon as you stop, it goes down to zero. But to be honest, I haven't found it too annoying. And that's it. I made myself a pump. And I rewarded myself by flying to Australia and going for a surf. Which was pretty great. But now I'm back home, and it's almost winter, and I'm editing this video. Hmm. All right, I made an air pump out of stuff. To be honest, when I started this, I wasn't sure if I could get a pump that holds enough pressure, but this one, I've measured up to 25 PSI on it. Of course, when you make a smaller pump, it's gonna take longer to pump up whatever you're pumping because the pump is smaller. One thing that's really great is the handle doesn't actually need to be glued onto the plunger and it still seals fine. And that's great because if something breaks, then you don't have to rebuild the whole thing. You just rebuild the broken part. And in my case, that is actually what happened. So my wife and I were doing a classic stand-up paddleboard inflation race, as you do. And um, I was maybe getting a little vigorous with the pump. And what happened is one of the valves broke. So how the valve broke is the little end that I mushroomed with the soldering iron. Well, that mushroom part broke off. I guess just from keeping on going back and forth, it slowly broke it off. And now it's just trapped in here floating around and it's going to be pretty hard to fix. Handily, I actually made two handles when I was doing this tutorial, so I had another one ready to go. What I would do is actually change the construction of that part and instead of flaring the end with a soldering iron, I would like 3D print a little cap that glues onto that um, rod so that it um, doesn't have that variability of how well you've flared the end and that should help it not to break, I hope. I intentionally didn't glue this cap on so it can come off and that gives you access if you need to re-grease the pump or if fix something or whatever. So yeah, I think that was a success. It allowed me to go to Australia with this in my suitcase and use my inflatable surfboard over there. Anyways, I think that's it. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. See ya.